how to fit architrave. Mark a 4mm line from the outside of the door frame. You can either use a ruler or a tape measure and then create the full line using a set square. Speed this up now to show you quickly that we mark out the full door. Okay, now we need to make sure that we mark out the intersect lines in the corner. So we're just going to cross over those two lines, I'm just using you know, a ruler and a pencil. And there we have, we have the one. And do the exact same on the opposite side. Once that's done, offer the architrave up to the line and mark at the intersect point at the top left. As you can see here, there's the mark on the board. We want to just roughly follow that round and then give a, a rough guide as to the direction of our cut so we know which way to go. Set the mitre saw to 45 degrees and then make the first cut. If you don't have a mitre saw and you can also use a mitre box, uh, but in this case we had one to hand, so we, we used it. Okay, so run up the architrave up to the, the four millimeter line to make sure that it fits. And then we can, we can apply our adhesive. You can use squiggles here to cover more surface area. Some people use blobs and some people just use lines, but we find that squiggles is generally a better way to go about it. And then carefully make sure that you put it in place along the four millimeter line. Just hold it in place while the adhesive sets a little. If you want to here, you could either add a few pins to keep it in place, or you might not even use adhesive altogether. Just speed that up to show you putting it in place. Next, uh, this, the piece on the left is to demonstrate the piece that's already on the wall. We're gonna take our, our top piece put it up and show the, the rough cut that we need to make. Again, this is for, just for guidance purposes so that when we get to the saw, we don't forget which way we've got to cut. Again, we need to set our miter saw to 45 degrees. This time it's the opposite way. So we follow that line and make, make the right cut. Make that cut for the headpiece. And we need to make sure it goes across the top of the intersect line. So we're going to hold it in place, make sure it, it fits correctly. And 
factors. And here we need to mark off the other intercept line at the bottom. And then at the rough guidance of the, the opposite angle you need to make. We're just going to uh, make the mark from the intercept drawing a bit clearer. just bring it onto that first piece so we know exactly where we've got to go from. We set our miter saw to the opposite angle, that opposite 45 degree angle. And make that cut. Okay, and then we put our headpiece back on the wall to check that it, it lines up correctly and it matches with our intersect point. As you can see, it's bang on in the, in the middle. So we can now apply some adhesive, get with squiggly lines and pin that to the wall. Put in a few extra pins just to make sure it's uh, secure. Okay, so the final piece that we need to put on, we need to measure from the bottom of the, the headpiece to the floor. So we'll get our tape measure out. Measurement and on our final piece, we need to cut out a particular point. Mark it using the bevel. And make sure that we show the direction that we're cutting. For making cuts to longer pieces of board, you might need support on your miter saw. Here we show two extension pieces that help support the board, making it easier to make the cut. Next we set the mitre saw to 45 degrees in the, the direction that we need to go. And then we make the cut. We take this back and we Put it up to make sure it fits correctly across the line. In this case, it was a little too long, so we needed to take a, a just a couple of mil off the bottom, a very small cut. This is why it's best to overestimate sometimes because you, you can make slight adjustments if the piece is too long. If you cut it too short, then you won't be able to make any uh, amendments to it. So if you're worried, make sure you overestimate. So then we just took a, a couple of mil off the bottom of the piece, and now it make, now it fits a lot smoother and looks a lot better. So once we've tested that, now we need to put some pins in it 
to, to fit it to the wall. Okay, finally to, to cover up the, the holes ready for painting, then you use wood filler and a palette knife and just go over those, those holes. Let that dry and then you can sand it off, make it smooth and then paint over it with any touch-up paint.